The strictest in the nation abortion ban has taken effect, but one key lawmaker says the legislature might soften it. Yeah, right now there's only one exception to that law, but State Senator Greg Albritton, who was a co-sponsor of this bill three years ago, says there could be changes. Fox News investigator reporter Brendan Kirby now joining us here in studio with that story. And Brendan, you spoke with the senator about this. Yeah, I did. That's right, Lenise and Byron. He's not going into detail about what specific changes he'd support, but he says the issue almost certainly will come up during the legislative session next year. When the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade last week, it opened the door to the ban Alabama passed three years ago. It prohibits all abortions from conception and includes just one exception, for women facing a serious health risk from pregnancy. There are no penalties for women who obtain abortions, but performing them is a Class A felony punishable by up to life in prison. I think what's going to happen is you're going to find uh, when we get into session, there's going to be several um, amendatory bills to, to look at means and methods to uh, isolate exemptions in, in this or some other way to deal with those matters. Senator Greg Albritton says exceptions for rape and incest are possible, although he adds he'd need to see details before deciding whether he supports them. Senator Vivian Davis Figures of Mobile tells me she hopes lawmakers at least add those exceptions. Compromising doesn't sit well with anti-abortion activists. Eric Johnston, president of the Alabama Pro-Life Coalition, says any exceptions arguably would violate a 2018 state constitutional amendment approved by voters. Our position was the unborn child is a person, regardless of how they're conceived, and we wanted to protect their lives. And so it, what was true then is still true now. We're also getting some clarification from the Alabama Attorney General's office. The law doesn't apply to the Plan B morning after pill, but it does apply to pills like RU486, which can terminate a pregnancy during the first 10 weeks. It accounts for more than half of abortions in the United States. Enforcing that may be difficult, though. President Joe Biden made clear after the high court's ruling on Friday that those drugs will remain available regardless of individual state laws. That issue is most likely headed to court. Law professor John Carroll points to a recent Supreme Court ruling on a related issue involving opioid drugs. And I think it's a good argument that once the FDA approves a drug for nationwide distribution and sale, that a state can't then say, no, you can't distribute it and sell it in our jurisdiction. As to exactly how the law might be enforced, the state attorney general's office tells me that as a law enforcement agency, it doesn't disclose methods and means of investigations. Reporting live from the studio, Brendan Kirby, Fox 10 News.